Tom here from Learn Systems, and we're going to talk about HAProxy, PFSense, the ACME protocol. Let's encrypt. So there's a lot to talk about here. It's going to be a little bit longer of a video. If you want to learn more about me or my company, head over to LawrenceSystems.com. There's a Hire Us button up at the top. If you want to support the channel in other ways, there's affiliate links down below for deals and products and services that we talk about on this channel. And this has been a popular requested subject, and it's actually a pretty awesome feature built into PFSense. Now, HA Proxy, if you haven't heard of it, is very, very diverse. We're going to talk about a specific use case of HA Proxy, in, which is SSL TLS offloading mode and working as a reverse proxy, because a lot of people get sick of those, you know, self-signed certificates and the click-throughs and things like that, but not all devices have easy ways to get certificates installed. And some devices may not have ways behind your server to get the certificate installed at all. Therefore, one of the things you can do is put HA proxy in front of it combined with Let's Encrypt certs and have automatic free renewing certificates while also having security for the outside of the network. Now, let's talk about the layout real quick here and a couple things to get out of the way. One, this is running on a NetGate PFSense SG1100. Yes, this tiny little box. Uh, so we're going from the internet to the SG1100. We are going to be setting up my NAS right here, which has a self-signed cert, which is running free NAS, and it's called Purple NAS. Sync thing, also running a self-signed cert. Now, both of these are HTTPS. And to make the demo diverse, I set up a couple other web servers that are not running any type of certification or encryption. So we have uh, a couple jails set up inside of Free NAS here. One's called Azkaban and one's called Nova Prospect. And both of these are just running port 80, no HTTPS, no SSL, TLS, no type of certificate. certificate. But what that means, so I can get this out of the way, is that you'll be able to see the traffic if you were inside the network. So all these are on the same flat network. This is really boring setup I had uh, configured at my house just for this demo. And you're able to see traffic on the inside here, but all the traffic that gets out here will be encrypted. And this is a popular use case for this, not only because of the certificate problem, but let's talk about real quick. There are some jails in FreeNAS that have this problem. They don't come currently with their plugins, NextCloud being one of them, set up for SSL or TLS. So if you were to build a SSL or TLS jail, and this is part of one of the examples, and I just didn't feel like setting it up at home, um, you could load NextCloud here. Now, granted, internal of your network would not be encrypted, but once it gets outside, you'd have a self-signed, or not self-signed, but a proper certificate from Let's Encrypt uh, issued here. So the TLS encryption is happening here, and there's no encryption on the local network. So yes, someone can sniff the local traffic. Here, it's a self-signed search, so at least it's encrypted, but it is self-signed. And we'll be addressing that when we set up the HA proxy. So you'll notice there's an option for HA proxy because it can actually act as a proxy for fully signed certificates and do offloading. There's a lot more features than I won't go into complete depth on here, but it can handle it. But one of the things we're going to be doing is because these certs are self-signed, we're going to be telling it to ignore those self-signed certs. And I will comment real quickly, this is impressive that the SG1100 handles this as well as it does. But if you want to scale up and you want to do this in production uh, with high volume, you're going to need a faster box. AJ Proxy will do wonderful for the, all the testing we're doing right here on an SG1100 in its small footprint. But obviously, if you're putting this in production, you're going to need a, a faster hard piece of hardware in order to do the offloading because, well, it does take a little bit of processing power and memory to start running a more elaborate setup. Now, it does do, I will note as well, load balancing, but we're not doing any of the load balancing today. Uh, that's going to be a little bit more of an advanced video. Maybe I'll do that later, depending on how much demand there is for it, but that's more into the corporate side. The other thing I'll note is, yes, you will be able to see my public IP address at home for this setup. Uh, someone always likes to know when I've accidentally, so to speak, leak that out, but not a big deal. This is designed to show you all of this. Matter of fact, one of the things we're going to start with is right here in DigitalOcean. We have this domain we use called the Detroit Yodeling Company.com. Well, just Detroit Yodeling Company.com. And I have some records set up. And these records right here are the A records we need to get Let's Encrypt working. And we're going to start there and show how Acme works inside of PFSense, the automatic certificate management engine, how it gets certificates. But it does start with, before you can even think about certificates, having your 
proper A records for validation. Now, I like DigitalOcean. They have a really solid platform. By the way, there's an affiliate link down below. It is much appreciated if you want to sign up that you use my affiliate link. Um, it does give me a few extra. They don't give me money. They just give me uh, credits to use for hosting projects and things like that. So I don't have to pay money. So it's kind of like money. Anyways, just making sure I'm clear on the disclosure here. So this is my uh, public IP address and I need these A records pointing so all of these domains work. But if you're doing this and you don't really want things publicly exposed, you don't necessarily have to. Uh, we're going to be using DNS domain validation. And the DNS validation with the API key in DigitalOcean makes this really, really simple. So let's look at that real quick. So here's all the different ones I have in here. Purple NAS, home.detroityodlingcompany.com, syncthing.detroityodlingcompany.com. Ask Ben, these are all .detroityodlingcompany.com right here. All these certs and they've all been recently issued because it's been setting it up for this video. And we're going to go ahead and add one more in the list here. So test two is not in use right now. So test two, we can add and we'll just walk you through. These are all set up, but I'll walk you through how you add one. So we'll start here. Go add, and we'll just call it test two for YouTube. YouTube demo. Count name home cert. Now, quickly here, not a big deal to set this up. You can uh, decide to set these up when you add name, let's encrypt testing. You can do the test and then you can move it over to the actual setup, put your email address and your account key, create new account key, this part's pretty straightforward. So if we do this right here, it's gonna pull a key and then we register with it. This just registers an email address and there. Yes, this is a you know partially exposed private key and I'm not worried about it because we're gonna not save this particular one, but you do have to have an account with Let's Encrypt. It's free to set up. You just do it right here. You don't gotta do anything else and I can register it. So here's the one I already have registered right here. I just called it my house home cert key. Really straightforward to do that. that not a big deal. Once you have that, then you can start adding certificates. And the final thing is making sure you turn on the cron entry so it automatically renews these. When they uh, expire, we'll get close to before expiration, it'll automatically kick off a job inside of PFSense that will renew them. So now let's go ahead and add that YouTube demo one. YouTube test two demo, oops, YouTube demo. Status active, private key, no, no worries here. Mode enabled, domain name. Let's go back over to DigitalOcean. Domain name is going to be test two. I like that they put the little copy button. Just makes it nice and easy doing this. So domain name, we put that here. How do you want to validate it? Well, this is awesome because they have so many different things in here. Uh, web root, web FTP, standalone HTTP, standalone TLS, DNS manual. This is cool too if you do a DNS manual because what DNS manual allows you to do is actually just put in, and I, I didn't go through the whole demo on this, but that's what this record is here. This is what a DNS manual looks like. It puts a TXT, a text record in uh, to your DNS for the challenge response. So there's a lot of different ways to verify it. And there's a huge number of providers in here. So we go through all the providers. And you can see there's just a ton of different companies. If you're a Cloudflare user, Cloud DNS, if you're an Azure user, an Amazon user, really easy to put any of these in there. And by the way, yes, you can run PFSense in Azure or in Amazon behind or in front of your infrastructure. So everything behind it can get certificates. And that is sometimes how this is used. So if you were to spin this up and then you were hosting all your stuff in Amazon or Azure and you wanted this to handle the HA proxy SSL offloading, this is still the same process you'd follow. I happen to be doing it on an SG1100 at home, but the concept's exactly the same. So let's get over here to DigitalOcean. Now, if well, one last note here, if you just do like the local folder standalone, it does require that you open some ports because it will do the standard type of verifications, but I, I prefer the DNS verification right here. So we're going to choose DigitalOcean. We have to put in my DigitalOcean API key. This I'm going to blur out. Uh, I will not have throw this out there in the public, even though when I'm all done, this is all getting destroyed. Uh, but the DigitalOcean API key is pretty easy to create. They've got plenty of work instructions on DigitalOcean, but what these do is when you're using any of these other providers that are going to give you a specific API key. So it's like, even though there's a lot of different options, they all kind of work the same. Sometimes it's API keys plus secret. But what this does is API key, keep this private, um, 
in terms of don't put it out on the internet, don't paste it somewhere public. Uh, but you put this API key in there and it will reach out and confirm that you are the owner. So PFSense, using the API key, reaches out to DigitalOcean, reaches out to Let's Encrypt, and is going to sign the certificate here based on that information, based on the DigitalOcean API key. So I'm going to copy the key real quick and uh, save it in here, but I'll blur that out. All right. It's saved, but not issued. Uh, quick note, I did have to do this. Uh, you can't have spaces in there. When it, I hit save, I had to take the space out for test two demo, in case you're wondering what the difference is between the way it's saved and the way you've seen it. Now, all we have to do is issue renew. So currently, you can see the last renew date for these, and we're going to go ahead and issue renew this one, and it takes a minute, it'll spin, and it'll do the certificate renewal for the test two demo. Now, once it's all done, it does take a minute, you get this right here, and it just lets you know that the whole key is installed and it's all set up and configured inside of here in the Acme service. So we can go back over here, services, Acme certificates. And now we have this one and it's issued today, Wednesday, March 11th, 2020 at 9.04, which is the right time. So that is now done. Now, the plugins and everything that are loaded, loaded here, I'm gonna show you real quick on the package manager. I didn't mention this at the beginning, but mention real quick. I did load this as a plugin in case you didn't see under services, the uh, Acme plugin. I did load that and the other one we did load is HA proxy. So the, that's the two we are using here. Now let's go over here to system certificates or certificate manager under system. And we can see all these certificates and where they're set up and where they're installed. Now by default, web configuration default does have the server certificate of self-signed. So that is from when you set up PFSense, um, it'll have it. And I do have another cert I have in here for my OpenVPN server. But you may have noticed at the top, it says home.detroityodlingcompany.com colon 10443. How does that work? Really simple. We go over here and we go to advanced. And instead of using the self-signed cert, I'm using the home.detroityodlingcompany.com. I can use any of the certs that are in here. There's even the test to demo if we wanted to change it. What this allows us to do is not deal with self-signed certs on my system here. So I'm accessing it via the public internet, home.detroitlingcompany.com, colon 10443, as you can see here. One more thing that's important, or PFSense will not let you log in, is the alternate name. So home.detroitlingcompany.com is the alternate name. When you're setting this up for a self-signed cert for the system itself, it goes right here. Now, I don't recommend opening your system uh, to the general public like this. It's generally not a good idea. Um, I did this in the way my rules are, and let's go over to my rules real quick. So firewall rules, you can see I have a rule right here at the bottom for LTS remote web access, and the source list is LTS office. Uh, this is filtered, and actually this entire demo, because this is an you know, obviously live on the internet, so to speak. Uh, I have it all filtered so it specifically only is allowing my office to communicate with it. So it's not open to the greater public, so to speak. Um, any of these connections, matter of fact, we're going to be using 443 for HA proxy. These are all not available to the greater public. They're all filtered. So the only source is the public IP address of my offices is allowed to access this for this demo. So if you were to go from, let's say, somewhere else to this IP address, it won't work. So we have the firewall rules all set and ready. So I'm able to access things from my office here to my house for this particular demo. But one other thing of note, if you're doing this and you don't want public access, you only want to have your own local servers for your own purposes, and this is something we use as well, you can set this up so you have it as a reverse proxy for local things without any public access. We're doing it with public access because I, I wanted to show the entire process for it. But if you want, you can delete these. And if you're local, it will automatically wrap them around provided you have net reflection turned on inside of PFSense, uh, which is pretty easy to do under system, advanced, firewall and NAT. And that reflection mode is on pure NAT. What this will do is allow the system to have no problems with um, working so when you put the public IP address 
in, even as far as like, you know, home.detroityearling.me.com, but you're inside your own network with nothing open to the external world, it goes, oh, you must want that internally. And you'll see that when we get to HA proxy, what it's doing is reflecting back in because it goes, oh, we can return this internally. So just a note on if you didn't want to publicly expose thing, it's not necessary. Matter of fact, you can build like your own, if you had freenas.yourdomain.com and you just didn't want to expose it to the world, which is a really good idea. Don't publicly expose freenas unless you really, really want to, but then you could just reflect it internally without any actual public exposure using HA proxy. But then you could still have the, not dealing with the self-signed cert, you'd have a properly signed Let's Encrypt cert. All right. Moving on to the HA proxy part now. Now we get to the fun stuff. So that's pretty much how the Acme cert works. Like I said, it's easy enough to set your certificate here, but how do we set it for all the servers? So let's go back over here to HA proxy and start working on that part of it. So we have two pieces that need to be set up with HA proxy. You have the front end and the back end. And kind of like it may imply, you actually got to set the back end first. So here are those servers Purple NAS, SyncThing, AskBan, and Nova Prospect. Back over here, here they are again, purple, mass, sync thing, no prospect, etc. These have no encryption, no encryption, self-signed cert, self-signed cert. So how does that work? Go back over here. And the reason this one's grayed out and these ones are here is because when they're in use, they are showing like this. So let's go back over to the back end and take a look at it. So active Nova Prospects, Nova Prospect, address plus port. So address 1926. 1681.40, port 80, not encrypted, don't check SSL. And what certificate should we use? Well, we're going to tell it to use the certificate that matches this. So when you're adding the certificates, we're going to add another one just to show you, but it's pretty simple. You would go here to the back end. When you add a server, you just choose whichever certificate you wanted to use. Who's the CA? Well, Let's Encrypt is going to be the CA we're using. And here's all the options. So when you add new servers, really simple to do. You choose the one that matches which one you want to use. And to keep the naming simple, we named each one the same. Now, there are more advanced ways you can actually reuse the same cert and create really specific rules. So based on certain things, it gives people different certs based on uh, rules and HA proxy. We'll get into that. Uh, but we're keeping this on the simple side just to get you started with it. So when you create a back end, and we'll look at this one here too. So here's purple NAS. So active purple NAS address plus port is the forward two options, which pretty straightforward, but you can do, you know, different ways to do it. Like I said, um, here's the server address port 443. And this is left unchecked because it has a self-signed cert. We don't want it checking the SSL cert because well, it's going to find it's invalid. We, it's a self-signed cert. So, but we are saying talk to this in an encrypted fashion. So when it talks to the purple NAS, I already have this set up and I have encryption. So if we go and look at my free NAS, which I'm logged into right here, see it how invalid organization LTS cert. It's just a self-signed cert I created when I turned on the encryption for this. So that's why I get that error when you go to it and you get the self sign for your connection to the site is not secure because, well, I self signed the cert. So you don't, that's why you want it checking. Go back over here to the back end. The same thing with sync thing. I have sync thing set up. Same exact thing. Sync thing happens to run on port 8384 and I turned on certificates uh, with, turned on TLS SSL with sync thing but it generates its own certificate. It just does that automatically when you turn it on. I've got other reviews of it. So the same answer. We want, yes, to talk to this encrypted, but don't check the cert because, well, it's invalid. Then we go here and just to confirm, once again, no SSL checks, no encrypted SSL, and we're talking on port 80 on these. So if I go to these, there's, go all the way over here, HTTP colon slash slash, not secure, no certificate, as you can see. Site settings, nothing in there. So it works, it works perfectly fine, but no certificate, completely unencrypted normal traffic. So back over to how this actually works. So once we have the back end all set up, there's really not anything you have to do down here. Uh, pretty much you can 
get into, like I said, a million options for load balancing and everything else you want to put this in there. Uh, they've done an amazing job over at PF Sense of building in every feature, access control lists and everything else. So you can get really fine grained and create expressions and rules of what works, what can connect. Uh, it has health checking in there. So you can actually constantly check the servers and use that health checking information to um, define the system in different ways for how it does it. For example, if you're load balancing different servers, just you can get notifications for mail level, mail to, who it sends information to, uh, statistics for each one of the front ends, et cetera, et cetera. And if for some reason you found a parameter that wasn't uh, in here, yes, you can actually pass through per server parameters for each one of these. But for the most part, we're going to leave all this at none. So when you go in here, it's basic. It's just this server. Don't leave all these at default. Don't need a health check method. It's not necessary for what we're doing here. Um, not worrying about any of this. Nope. Unless you want to get email notifications, per server pass you. All these are just left empty. So it's really, really basic setup to get, the, get you started on this. Now the front end, I made it a little bit more complicated because I have these all set up. So what we did here, and we're going to add one more to show you what it looks like. I built the first piece of the front end is going to be the Azkaban. Now what that means is we're going to tie it to the WAN address as a listen port, port 443. Check the SSL offloading because we're offloading SSL because this is handling it. And what type of offloading? HTTP, HTTPS offloading, just like it shows right here. So the client talks to HTTP proxy and then this talks to the server. And this, and this is an example of SSL TLS offloading just like they have in green here where it says clear traffic. That is clear traffic here, but ciphered and encrypted traffic here. And that's actually what's going on with this particular server. So by default, it grabs this. Then we go down here. And this is where we're going to skip over and ignore this part first, because I want to show you how this works. So the first one we added was the Azkaban. So I go over here. And if we pull it, you see what this is is OpenSSO client server name, Azkaban.DetroitYearlyIncome Town. That's the SNI name we sent. What's the host? 69146153, port 443. And then I just wanted to show the subject line. It pulls the subject and shows a cert. What does that look like in action? We have a fully fined valid certificate at Azkaban Detroit Yearly Income Community Comp. So completely working certificate right here uh, and valid. The next one is this one. Now, we are both pulling exactly the same IP address, but when we send the SNI here of this in the browser, novaprospect.detroitillincoming.com, we yield a different search. So let's go ahead and change that. So if we go here, novaprospect.detroitillincoming.com, we see we get a different cert sent to us. And th what this does, and now we'll go back over to HA proxy, is it goes through here and it says, hey, how do we how do we get these going? So we get the Nova Prospect when the host matches Nova Prospect at Detroit it says send this. So it's gonna go here, host matches. This is the SNI sent, so the, the server name information that's sent by the browser. And it says when this is sent and it matches this rule, send this certificate. Now, there's two pieces to this. First rule, access control list. Nova prospect, host matches, nova prospect, chat, .com. Use backend. This is an important part. Condition name, nova prospect. Use backend, nova prospect. So what these rules are doing is saying when it matches this, use this backend, the, the defined backend over prospect, send it over there. And the same thing with the next rule down. It says sync thing. If the host name matches sync thing at DetroitYearlingCompany.com, let's look at that one real quick. Do the same thing. We'll put sync thing right here. We pull syncthing.detroitutilingcompany.com and we have the valid certificate there. Now, syncthing, if you remember, is on port 8384, but we're redirecting it to port 443. That's defined right here. It says no matter which one of these rules we have, always send everything over port 443. So there's syncthing, there's the Nova Prospect, so the back end use syncthing. Now, the last little piece that's really important is down here. 
we had to add Nova Prospect and SyncThing as additional certificates. That's important because you want to make sure these certificates are available. So the front end needs to know what certificates need to be pulled based on the SNI information. And it's pretty simple because the default box is checked. And we're going to add one more to walk you through the process one more time. Also, we have to have a default certificate, the Azkaban one. So if we don't send an SNI information that matches any of these ACL rules, what certificate are you going to send? Well, that's what that that's an important part too. So we go over here and we get up here again. So sync thing and Nova Prospect are both valid. So if we pull them, but we put in gibberish, which doesn't match anything, it pulls the askaban.detroityearlincoming.com because that's the default cert. It says if it can't match any of these other ACL rules or conditions, just go ahead and send the default cert. And if someone were to go to this website, and we'll just do it real quick. And you head over here and we put HTTPS colon slash slash. Not secure. Proceed. Service unavailable because nothing matched. So it says I can't send you anything uh, because not, you don't match any of my ACL rules. So even though the common name was this, it still doesn't send me the actual this right here because it didn't match DCL rules. So people who don't know and are just probing at port 443 on this particular server, if it was publicly accessible, they would just get service unavailable because they didn't send an SNI name. So you could build some other catch-all rule if you wanted to, but for the most part, if they're hitting 443, no need to tell them an, a certificate or anything. I mean, tell them a certificate so they can figure it out, but it doesn't have to actually fill out, fill out the back end because, well, nothing matches. So one of the other things that doesn't match right now either, and the next one we're going to add is, go back over here, purple NAS. Does not pull it. So purple NAS doesn't exist yet. It does exist because we have it here. It's pointed there. But if we went there, it's not giving us the right certificate. So what we want to do is publicly expose, and back over here, and we're going to go ahead and add one more to this. So let's walk back over real quick, look at the back end, and we see the purple NAS back end already set up, but it has no front end tie-in, so let's tie it to a front end. We're going to have an edit. Leave this the same up here at the top, and let's add one more. Let's we'll call it purple. Make sure we got the right name, hit the copy. Typos are the killer. Copy and paste whenever you can. <laughs> now, when you're saying host starts with, ends with, matches, regs, host contains, there's a ton of little things you could do for custom ACL rules. Matter of fact, you can fine grain this where if they hit certain sections of the website, it can direct to different servers. Like I said, this has an amazing amount of options on it, but we just want host matches because we want to say when the host SNI matches, purplenast.detroitloadingcompany.com, we're going to create this rule, access control is purple. Now it doesn't really matter, I can call this really anything, but whatever I call it, and it won't autofill this. So if I go down here, use backend, backend's gonna be purple NAS. I have to make that whatever I put here match right here. That's the important part. So it doesn't autofill like I've already done sync thing before and it doesn't autofill it. So you just gotta, once again, I'll copy and paste. So purple. So now we're saying, first part of the ACL rule, and then the action from that rule. So when this rule is matched, purple, host matches, purple, uh, nas.detroityodelincompany.com, use backend sync thing, see below, use backend, backend purple NAS. Awesome, but we're not done yet. We don't have that certificate added, so we gotta go down here and say, Purple NAS. We just have to make the certificate available. That's all we had to do. And this box is checked. It says add ACL certificate for subject alternative names. So now this is just about the bottom part here. And it's not always that you're doing this unless you are trying to do something with a different certificate name. So, uh, but for what we're doing right here, yes, this is exactly what we want. And we hit save and apply changes. All right, so we have the same public IP 443. And it's SSL floating and purple NAS right now, as we know, has this little self-signed certificate. But now what we should be able to do is go HTTPS. Do 
to the purple NAS. And there we go. We have a proper self-signed certificate, valid cert for purple NAS going right here. So I can log into my free NAS. Now, what if you wanted to put it on another port? I'll show that real quick. And we go here, I'm gonna add And if you've seen when my firewall rules, I have another port open, 12443. Purple NAS, HTTPS offloading, no need an access control list, just run through basic options, choose a certificate, Purple NAS. There's no additional certificates, but if there were, you check this. Save, apply. And what we did was we just reused the same backend and now we're pointing it at 12443 with the same one. So what happens if we do that? Oh, I did it wrong. See what, let's see what mistake I made on here. Okay, I see what I missed. This is an important one. I missed this a couple times. You have to define a default backend right here or it doesn't work. So define the default backend as purple NAS. I did miss that going through it. I think it's the most common one that I keep missing is that particular one. And it works, really simple. But I, I think that's the most mistake I made when I'm setting these up is sometimes I forget that it doesn't default to a backend. You do have to choose a backend to make this work. So kind of gives you an idea. You can run these on multiple servers, multiple addresses all at once. We've bound these two here and they're gonna work internally or externally. And you don't have to have the WAN rules unless you're doing like I'm doing. I'm at my office connecting these to my house to get these working. So kind of gives you an idea of how the system works. But pretty straightforward to do. Lots of rules, lots of options. Uh, there is so much more you can do with this. Like I said, I'm touching the tip of the iceberg on terms of this. But a lot of people just want to do a basic self-signed certificate. And this will definitely get you started for that. Or get rid of the self-signed certificate, I should say, and do a Let's Encrypt sign certificate for local servers. But by doing it with DNS, it's one of my favorite ways to do it because you don't need to expose any of your infrastructure. You can keep all the ports closed. Uh, you can have it validate just like I showed you with DigitalOcean or a long list of other places to do this. And of course, if you are building infrastructure in the cloud, there's the options like I mentioned at the beginning of doing this with both Azure um, or Amazon and building some cloud infrastructure with PFSense in front of it. And doing the same thing, handling all the Let's Encrypts uh, certificates there. And it, it's just a really nice service because as long as you have this set to auto renew, it will work perfectly fine. It also has, and I will mention this, right to Acme certificates to conf Acme in various formats used by other scripts or daemons integrate with certificate manager. If you wanted to go beyond this or not even run the HA proxy directly in here, but somehow pull those, there is the ability with PF Sense to uh, have it write out those certificates to grab them and pull them and put them elsewhere. Also, when renewing the certificates, something you may have to run into here is when they renew, use to restart web server processes after the certificate has been renewed. Add, enable, command, shell command. You can tell it to restart services as well if you need to. Um, that way, if there's any problem, you would, for example, restart HA proxy. So we'll do this one real quick here because until it rereads the certificate, you don't have it. So I want to mention that for some uh, housekeeping that we're going to head and enable and add that we restart HA proxy after we do the renew. This is an important thing because you'll go, all of a sudden my certificates seem to be renewed, but the services are still showing the old ones. Just restart the service. Well, obviously the goal is to keep this as automated as possible, but use to restart web server process. I will mention this, that if you're going to do this in production and you don't want to have a uh, phone call from everyone going, hey, all my certificates are showing expired, you will have to set these up. So restart a lo local captive portal instance, uh, restart the GUI, HA peer, uh, restart the firewall shell command. There's different ones you can do because you do want to, Renew the cert, for example, where it says home Detroit Oiling Company .com, like we showed in the beginning. You may want to restart that as well if you're using the certificate because it's just rest not starting starting the whole PF Sense system. It's just restarting the specific web uh, web GUI here or the HA proxy one. And I will might do a further video on this later because uh, the next question comes up about one of the things it has in here. 
is the captive portals. You can use these when you're building captive portals to use a certificate for those because sometimes you want a captive portal and if you're capturing username password on there you probably want that encrypted even if it is on the local side because you're using it for some validation yes you can use these same certs for the captive portal maybe a future video i do but the same answer about once you do that so it doesn't expire you do want to have that service and start restart it so i'll leave um a link to if you obviously the PF Sense documentation is excellent on this topic where it shows you even more options. There's also a couple Hangouts videos uh, that from NetGate themselves that I'll link to as well that go through in some of the different topics in depth on on this. So it's a it's a pretty fun thing to play with. It's definitely an amazing feature built into PF Sense and it uh, really does get rid of all those problems you can run into with having all the self signed certificates for things, whether it's a local service you're running that you don't want exposed or one that you do want exposed. But it's definitely a great way to handle all of this and keep it all nice in one place and makes life a little bit easier. All right, thanks.